Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Howdy, friends, and welcome to the Ted Lasso Recap Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and I'm thrilled to be here with y'all today. Now, folks, if you're like me, you can't get enough of Ted and the gang over at AFC Richmond. But that is why I am here. Here to dive deep into every episode of this wonderful show and share my thoughts and my insights with all of you lovely folks out there. We are going to laugh, we are going to cry, but we're going to have a heck of a good time doing it. So grab your biscuits, settle in, and let's get started, shall we, with episode six, season three, episode six, Sunflowers. This episode came out April 19th, 2023, directed by Matt Lipsy. This episode, we have Richmond is out in Amsterdam to play an exhibition match. After the match, we see how everyone enjoys their night in their own ways out in Amsterdam. We have Beard helping Ted with some quote-unquote tea. As he struggles to find inspiration, Ted struggling to find inspiration, we have Rebecca meeting a mystery man. We have Roy and Jamie bonding even more. We have Colin and Trent. They have their storyline of what Trent found out about Colin. We get more development on that. We have the team struggling to decide how to spend their night together as a team. We also have William the Kit Man uh, has a night out with Higgins in the Red Light District. This is another great episode that had me choked up seeing the love and positivity that this show puts out into the world. One of the many reasons I love this show. It just makes me feel happy. Uh, So let's get into this episode, which opens with another loss, right? This time it's an exhibition game in Amsterdam. Everyone on the team is depressed after the match, which is the uh, fifth. Uh, They leaving after the after the game as everybody's depressed, walking off. uh, They play Bob Marley's song, Three Little Birds. Uh, You know, don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. As like the team is depressed walking off after another loss, you know. And Rebecca makes note of the song uh, saying how depressing it is, especially after a big loss. Uh, Then we have Roy and John uh, being interviewed. They ask Roy, uh, the interviewer asks Roy is if he's thinking or what his thoughts are on the poor performance and asking if he thinks it's due to Zava leaving. And Roy says, it doesn't matter. The game was a pretend game. This interview's a pretend interview. We're having a pretend conversation, right? You're a pretend person with a pretend job, right? And he's having a hard time pretending to give a shit, right? It's classic Roy uh giving his uh uh, you know not really being the best interview subject but uh we have rebecca uh reminding herself that it's only one night in amsterdam before she gets to go back home she's not very excited about this whole thing especially after another loss uh we have higgins uh who says he's got a date at the red light district uh both keely and rebecca kind of look at each other and like nah that's not what he meant. That's not what he's. That's not what he's gonna do, because it's, it's Higgins. Of course, it's not Higgins. Higgins is gonna go have a date with a prostitute. What's going on here? Of course not. He's married. He's happily married. He's got a bunch of kids. Why is he doing this? Then we have Rebecca asking Keely what uh, they should do together, and Keely is stoked about checking out this once in a lifetime aurora borealis. Is like the most aurora borealis it could ever be uh it's supposed to be super cool so jack is picking her up in the private jet uh so it seems like you know rebecca knows about keely and jack 
uh, which happened in the last episode. And before leaving, Keeley thanks Roy for doing, like, he's down at the other end of the, the uh, hallway, and he, like, thanks him for doing the interview, which, of course, Roy will do anything for Keeley, right? There's clearly still that feeling there that Roy has for Keeley. And after Keeley leaves, Roy asks Rebecca where she's going, where she's off to, and uh, Rebecca's answer is pretty perfect. She, she says she's going somewhere that s- believes they deserve her. She's going off with somebody that believes she deserves her, which is like, man, uh, of course, Roy, Roy felt that. Uh, and Rebecca leaves and Roy's kind of left again, realizing that he's made a huge mistake dumping Keeley. Uh, and then he looks <clears throat> to his side right there in this hallway, he looks to the side where there's, you know, pictures of like notable soccer players and the dates that they played at this stadium. And of course, the 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 portrait the soccer play the football player that is right next to Roy as he looks is Zava right so Roy punches it it falls off the wall he gives it a good kick before walking off uh and the the reporter is just kind of like okay clearly knowing how unhinged Ted uh, not Ted but uh Roy is cut to Ted and Beard on the bus uh, they see Roy walk by them, growling as Roy does, uh, and they agree that he's in a mood. Uh, and then they look back at the rest of the, t- the players on the bus and realize that they're all in a mood. Uh, and Ted gets up to tell them, you know, three words that no coach ever says unless he means it. And one player says, you're all shit. And he's like, nope, that's not it. Another one His knowledge is power. And Ted's like, yeah, that's true, but that's not it either. And then uh, another player, live, laugh, love. And, of course, that's not it as well. Uh, The real answer is no curfew tonight. Everybody's stoked. Uh, Beard thinks it was a good call, right, especially for Ted, knowing uh, that Ted is having some issues. Uh, And he thinks, you know, Beard thinks Ted needs a night off as well. Um so everybody's stoked. Everybody's happy. They're in Amsterdam. They can do whatever they want. No curfew. Just make sure they show up the next morning for the bus ride back. Uh, Roy calls out Tart, right, and tells him that there's no, they're still training. You're not hanging out with these people as they have fun. We're training, right? And Roy demands they run. Also, Roy having issues of his own, probably wanting to get out some extra energy that he has. Uh, then Higgins invites the kit man, William, to join him, right? And he tells him that the first stop on their trip or their first place they're going to go when they're hanging out is the red light district, which I didn't even realize till the end of this episode that that's basically like Higgins is like his boss. So it's like William, the kit man, is being asked to hang out like his boss is asking to hang out with him kind of an interesting dynamic but higgins doesn't seem like a typical boss like higgins very aside from being the glue that holds that team together which zava said and i agree with uh he is one of the most as so many people are like the competition for who's the sweetest guy but higgins is like one of the sweetest if not the sweetest guy especially as far as the staff at richmond so Jamie telling Roy as they're on their run, Jamie's basically giving Roy uh, like a tour of Amsterdam because Jamie knows all about Amsterdam, showing him all these talking about all the historical facts that Jamie knows about Amsterdam. Uh, then they go to a bridge and and he tells him about this bridge, you know, that it was like in all these well-known movies like James Bond and all this stuff. And the next stop is Amsterdam's thinnest house. Right. And it's just Jamie is more energized than Roy. Right. Like Roy is like kind of regretting his decision to force Jamie to run because now it is Roy being led around by Jamie, who is outpacing him while also giving Roy a, you know, a, a tour of Amsterdam. Cut to Rebecca. Right. She gets a call from her friend Sassy. Uh, while walking around Amsterdam alone, she, obviously Keeley just bounced on her. So Rebecca's just walking around, gets a call 
Um, and she tells her to go eat a space cake uh, for her and call her when she freaks out, which surprising that the team is in Amsterdam and there wasn't more drug use happening, especially, I mean, not even like hard drugs, like just weed. Like at no point does anybody smoke weed. At no point does Rebecca actually eat a space cake. The closest is they drink alcohol, which is kind of a bummer. It's kind of a bummer. It would be like if they went to Denver and didn't smoke any weed. It's like you go to a place that's like one of the most well-known places for a substance that in some parts of the world, some parts of different countries, is very illegal for absolutely absurd reasons, and then you don't partake in it. Anyway. So, spoilers. Rebecca doesn't eat a space cake and call, and call sassy. But a guy who's like on a boat like Rebecca's walking around on a sidewalk by this canal right there's people on bicycles going by her and a guy gets her attention who's on one of these boats that's like docked gets her attention and while he gets her attention like you know kind of kind of cat calling but say like oh I wanted to get your attention you're very beautiful but then Bikes come by her, whizzing by her, and she kind of gets discombobulated and ends up falling in the canal. And the guy who kind of whistled at her in an in a act of solidarity, right? She's worried because her phone is in the water now. In an act of solidarity, he throws his phone in the water too, which is pretty ridiculous. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's, nobody's throwing intentionally throwing their phone in the water unless you're you're okay financially and are in a position where you don't need your phone for anything you can go a day without a phone a few days without a phone whatever it is anyway and she asked what he wanted to tell her and he was going to tell her that she was actually standing in the bike lane right And it's at this moment where I realized one of my predictions for this episode was thinking that she was going to hook up with Sam in this episode. And this, seeing this meet cute that is happening with this random guy in Amsterdam, it's it's very clear that I was wrong about that. And also very clear about other predictions involving, I don't think Sam and her are getting back together at all anymore, which is fine. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe things will change. I thought they were a good couple. I I didn't really care about the age difference between them at all. I thought they, they, I I don't know. I like Sam Obasanya. I like Rebecca. I like them together. But clearly my predictions of this episode, completely wrong. Cut to Ted texting Rebecca to see what she's up to tonight, right? See what her plans are. Obviously, she doesn't have her phone. So Ted doesn't ever get a response. And while Beard is telling him uh, some different sports trivia. And Beard asks Ted to find something. Like Beard's getting changed, getting getting ready for whatever he's about to do. Uh, and he's telling Ted, find something, find a place for us to go eat. And uh, Ted recommends he sees this American-style restaurant. Right, that serves American-sized portions, and of course, De- Ted is like, "Well, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a touch of home. It's gonna bring us back home, right?" And he's De- Beard asks, uh, "What it's rated? It's rated two point seven. So Beard's like, "No, pass. We're not going there." Uh, the Ted tells Beard like he feels stuck. Ted feels stuck, like he needs to get punched in the face, right, or drink a couple bottles of red wine and yell at his mom. He wants to try something new. And what I'm hoping is that I hope this is I hope this is what they're I hope Ted is going to get. I hope we're going to see Ted get high in this episode. It's like somebody they're in Amsterdam, right? They're in Amsterdam. Somebody has to get high. Somebody does. So I hope this I'm hoping this is what it means. Right. Ted wants to get inspired and then Beard pops his head out from, you know, where he's getting changed and tells tells him he's been waiting 
for him to say those words for a very long time, right? And I'm like, yes. Coach Beard, open about his drug use, right? Not a whole, like weed, mushrooms, psychedelics, those types of things, right? Very open. We saw the one night out with, with Coach Beard in the last season, right? We see the adventures Coach Beard goes on. So I'm like, yes, we are going to see a night out with Beard and Ted high. Like, yes. Then cut to the players, right? All meeting up in the lobby of the hotel before heading out. And you have Isaac, the the team leader, opening it up to suggestions. The French guy, right, says the best option for a night in Amsterdam is to take a train to Paris. Obviously, we know where he stands on that. Everybody's like, you're ridiculous. Uh, Sam... Obasanya, his dad suggests that they go on a b- boat tour around the canals. Danny wants to see a tulip. That's all he wants to see. Not an entire field of tulips. That would be too overwhelming. He just wants to see one tulip because that's Danny. Danny's like, Danny's a child. Danny is like a, a sweet, innocent, naive little child. And I kind of love Danny, right? It, it seems like, despite him being one of the two aces on the team, he has that childlike charm to him. Van Dam suggests that they go to a live sex show. Then Isaac asks Trent, who's just kind of perched in the back, you know, in the background. And uh, Trent recommends museums. And then Sam rec- recommends maybe just a night in. Right? Having a movie night. And they're like, no. Right? That's not what they want to do. So as they're kind of deciding, Higgins walks through the lobby. Right? Leave. He's leaving with William, the kit man. And uh, the team asks where Higgins is going. And he says that it's, it's the night William becomes a man. Right? And as they leave, the team, just like... Rebecca and Keeley look at each other and go, nah, that's not what... He's not taking William to the red light district to have sex with a prostitute. That's not what's happening, right? Everybody very dismissive about this idea that Higgins is going to the red light district, which is primarily associated with prostitutes, with legal sex work. And as they leave, so they the team doesn't buy it. They ask John what he like who's from there what he recommends and he recommends that uh there's a private all-night party that his cousin is djing right it's gonna this is what we need to do it's an all-night thing right and in the morning there's going to be a hearty breakfast which is like perfect right colin makes up an excuse not to join them right says he's got like stomach issues or whatever and you see trent kind of acknowledge that Colin is separating himself from the group. So the team settle on either the party or no, they, they find out that uh, the party is a two hour drive away, right? Danny recommends splitting up. Isaac's like, no, we are not splitting up. He demands that they decide on some, on one place that they go as a team. He wants them to do and bond as a team. So he orders, Isaac orders a round of drinks for everybody and a stack of napkins so they can vote on it. Cut to Rebecca getting out of the shower. She is now inside this dude's boat, right? He is not there. She gets out of the shower, right? Her clothes are in the dryer. They're still drying. He's not around anywhere to be seen, right? And she kind of just looks around the boat and she walks into a room, which the it's kind of it's it's that thing that you see in a lot of movies and TV shows. Usually it's in a like a camper, like a trailer, like an RV, where like inside it's like way bigger than it really should be. And you have that kind of thing, that kind of vibe in this boat where this this got a lot of square footage in this boat. But she goes into this room that's decorated like a little girl's room. So it's I assume this guy has a daughter, right? 
Then she sees on the coffee table in the living room, there's a cup of tea with a note on it saying that it's for her. And then she opens up the note and it reads inside that it, 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 he's insisting that it's not drugged. Right. Very. Yeah, I don't know if I trust that either. And this is where I'm thinking I'm remembering the predictions that the psychic has for Rebecca. Right. She's going to have a lot of kids, a family. Despite the fact it seems like the doctor in the previous episode tells her that she can't have kids. Right? We don't get clarification on that. We don't know specifically that's what he said. But based on her reaction, it seems as though that's what he said. However, this mystery guy, if this is the guy that she ends up who's a lot has to happen before that but it's like there is the chance that it's not she has kids is that she marries a guy who has kids so and this guy clearly has at least a daughter seemingly or a child that identifies as a daughter and she loves the tea she takes one step she's like holy shit this is great cut to jamie still leading roy on a tour Right. And Roy still growling. Then cut to Higgins and William arriving at the red light district. And William points out a plaque of Chet Baker, who's a trumpet player, a jazz trumpet player and singer who Higgins credits with the person like this guy's punk rock. This is the guy who got me into jazz. And as we know about Higgins, he plays the upright bass. Right. He is all about that upright bass jazz life. And this is the guy, Chet Baker, who inspired Higgins to get into the upright bass. And he points out the spot like this is the spot where he died. And then William asks how he died. And then they look up to a window and there's like a portrait of the guy. And he's like, he actually fell from that window. And we don't know. It's, it's unclear if he jumped or if he was pushed. And William's like, ooh, is, are we going to be solving the mur murder tonight? And uh, no, they're just there to pay respects, right? Then cut to Beard, who got some quote-unquote medicine from the bus driver. And Ted asks why he's bringing the quote-unquote medicine if it's already available there, right? They never explicitly say what this is. It could be he's making a tea out of it. He mentions that it usually tastes bad. People usually eat it with peanut butter and jelly, which I assume is mushrooms. But they never explicitly say it could potentially be weed. You can make, I forget what it's called. There's a way to kind of make an edible with like toasting. A, like, But I assume mushrooms makes the most sense, right? But they never explicitly say. Let's take a quick break from this episode because I want to promote. Are you looking for a way to take your love of the Ray Taylor show to the next level? Look no further than Inspire Disorder Plus. As a member, you'll get access to a whole host of amazing perks, including the full week of shows, ad-free in both audio and video versions, a live painting archive, early access to the many faces, members-only discounts and deals, a podcast back catalog with over 600 episodes. But that's not all. As a member, you'll get access to my personal blog as well as my creative writing. You'll also get get the chance to ask me anything you want. With all of these benefits and more, Inspire Disorder Plus is a must-have for any fan of The Ray Taylor Show. So don't wait. Go sign up now. Head on over to InspireDisorder.com slash plus and start enjoying all of the amazing perks of the membership. And now, let's get back to the show. And the reason why Beard didn't... Did, chose to get what was brought in versus go buy some is that he's trying to avoid pay the tax for it right ted is very nervous about this whole thing right says he's more of a beer or sour patch kids kind of a guy which i understand i've never done psychedelics i've only you know aside from alcohol smoking weed eating weed that's about all i've done in my life and I've had opportunities to do psychedelics, and I've always been very nervous. I've never really felt like I've been mentally in a place where I feel comfortable doing that or be with a person 
I felt comfortable doing that with, right? And I, I would imagine the given the right set and setting, given the right opportunity, I would. I don't have anything against it. But uh, I can sympathize with Ted's nervousness. Because uh, Ted, aside from drinking, seems like a very, you know, very straight, straight guy. Straight-laced kind of a guy. Uh, so, Beard, because it tastes bad, and this is that kind of like made me think it was mushrooms, he made a tea out of it. Which you could make a tea out of both. And Ted obviously hates tea. It's one of the, he, He's never liked tea. It's one of the worst things about going to the UK is that everybody drinks tea. He hates tea. He's tried it. doesn't like it. I, it's insane. There's so many different kinds of tea. There's clearly a kind of tea Ted would like. right? Maybe he doesn't like Earl Grey or whatever. doesn't like black tea. But I, like, give him some hibiscus tea. How could somebody not like hibiscus tea? Absolutely delicious. G- lemon ginger. I have this uh, ginger turmeric tea that's... It, you add cream to it. It tastes like you're eating, you're drinking a cream sickle. It is delicious. There are delicious teas out there. But Ted hates teas. And he compares it to hiding poop inside of a barf smoothie. Right? To disguise the taste of this medicine that tastes bad, he's going to put it into a drink that Ted openly hates. Beard, all he asks is for Ted to trust him. Right? And he tells Ted, this is how you change your mind. Right, as he holds up one of the glasses of tea. And Ted can't bring himself to drink it while cut to beard has already downed the entire glass. And they never explicitly say what the quote unquote medicine was. Right? I assume it's shrooms. And I would imagine Ted I would imagine Ted has at least experienced weed at some point. Right? I would I would it's like I it's so hard. I mean I didn't start smoking weed till I turned thirty. But I did, you know, like it's like it's like it's kind of weird anyway. Count, cut back to the team, right? Counting up their votes. They got nine votes for the sex show, right? Van Damme's pumped, but nine votes also for the private party, right? But one vote for Tulip, right? <laughs> so they narrowed it down to two. Danny brings up that somebody voted for Tulip, right? He denies saying it wasn't me. Right. And they're like, but they wrote it in Spanish. And he's like, somebody wrote it in Spanish. I love Danny so much. Right. What am I like? I love all these characters and for different reasons. But Danny, I just I I really do love Danny. Uh, So they asked Van Damme if he would prefer to watch two tired people. Oh, they they uh, one of them asked the waitresses in the lobby. To tell Van Damme what the reality of a live sex show is. So they asked Van Damme if he would prefer to watch two tired people have sex. Or would they rather go somewhere where he could potentially have sex himself. Right? What would you rather do? And he's like, oh, they're tired? He's like, yes. These people, it's their job. It is not, it is not as glamorous as you would expect. I would... I'm not a, I like I like porn. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I want to watch. I would especially like I would watching porn around other dudes is a very uncomfortable thing. I done it once in my entire life, in my early 20s, and it was very an, uh, it's a very uncomfortable thing to be hanging out with your dudes watching porn. To go to a theater to watch live sex would only make that far more uncomfortable let alone a some tired people having sex right so he backs down so they decide on the party right the french dude suggests that they go eat first i mean they have a two-hour trip so why don't they eat on the way what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what i think French dudes like we should eat something. So now they have to decide on where to eat. So it's like this is like I right now I had the feeling that they were just going to spend all night getting drunk, trying to just make decisions. Right. Never leaving the hotel lobby, just constantly fighting over the plans. Meanwhile, you see Colin who went up to his room now back down in the lobby, got his coat on, puts his hood over him and kind of sneaks out behind them. 
Trent hot on his heels. So this is we're finally set up episodes ago. We're finally seeing Trent. We're seeing what Trent is going to do with this knowledge, knowing that Colin is gay. Cut back to the boat where the mystery man comes back. He knocks on the door before entering just to make sure she's decent. Right? He decided to leave while she was taking a shower since just her taking a shower with on a strange boat is uncomfortable enough. He figured he would give her some privacy. And then he noticed that her foot's bleeding and goes to patch her up, mentioning that he was in the military and trained in first aid and doesn't want her blood on his floor. And when he's done patching her up, he gives her foot a kiss and says it's a, a force of habit, which I think it's because he's got a daughter. And that's what he does when she gets a boo-boo, right? And she thanks him for the tea. He recommends or suggests adding brandy to it if she would prefer. She turns that down. And she says that she ought to be leaving as soon as her clothes are done drying in like two and a half hours, right? So she realizes that she can't just leave. He offers to call her a cab and just put her wet clothes in a bag, right? Or she could stay and he can make dinner. She agrees to stay and make dinner. Uh, and he pulls out a giant bin of his ex's clothes for her to change into, which she's a little uncomfortable about, right? She feels a bit uncomfortable putting on his ex's clothes, understandable. And he offers to massage her feet after dinner if she'd like. She turns that down and he said, that's fine, right? If you w just want to stand there with tired feet, completely sober that is up to you uh it doesn't affect him in any way so she agrees for some brandy she's like okay i will loosen up give me some brandy the dude seems like he's being a nice guy but it's also still like who knows who knows this guy cut to jamie continuing his tour of amsterdam fun facts and roy telling him to stop right roy's exhausted doubled over asking jamie why he knows so much uh and Jam jamie finds out that roy's never been there right roy thinks it's just kind of like a fake place kind of like an amusement park right and he points at some fake windmills like the windmills aren't even real and jamie's like i'm gonna prove to you that the windmills are real right and runs off to go get some bikes cut to ted and beard watching tv and beard clearly feeling the tea right kind of just sunken into his chair just like nervously petting the the armrests of his chair and ted still has his full glass right he hasn't touched it at all as ted's flipping through the channels and ted tells beard that he can go if he wants and immediately beard is up and out before ted even finishes his statement and he tells him we'll see him in the morning so I'm hoping that Ted drinks his tea, right? Even if he's on his own, maybe he's more likely to do it. Less pressure, he'll do it. And you see him eyeball his full glass of tea. So it's, it's a potential. Cut to then Colin shows up at a gay bar called... Uh, oh, I wrote it down. He goes, shows up to a gay bar. <laughs> I wrote down, I got to spell it correct. Change whatever the pun title of this pun name of this bar was um but colin shows up to a bar and he orders asks if they have vanilla vodka which the bartender is like no and he orders a beer and asks the bartender if he knows who he is right colin a, a well-known athlete like he's an athlete right he, he definitely people might know who he is right and the bartender's like you can be whoever you want you don't yeah here you can do whatever you want and that's when you see trent show up and colin gets very nervous pretends that he just walked into the wrong place uh and walks out and trent follows him outside and tells him that he already knows and he's known for months right and that he hasn't told anybody and i'm at this point because it's like i never knew how trent was going to handle this information like i i like trent it seems like trent is a good person you know, when he spent time with Ted, he gave Ted the heads up when the article about his panic attacks was going to be published. 
which led to Trent being let go. Like, I think Trent is a good guy, but he's also a reporter, so who knows? Sometimes maybe he's, like, you know, riding that line. But it's clear that he's a good guy, right? It could have been, like, expecting him to potentially out Colin was something that I was worried about. But the way he said it, right, the way he said that he has no reason for – the way he tells Colin that he must have a good reason for not telling anyone, now the way Trent said that makes me think that maybe Trent is gay too, which is like, okay, perfect, right? Oh, it's not just one gay. It's two gay characters, and that – and. Trent sympathizes knowing what it's like. Cut to then Ted alone trying to text Rebecca again. He sent many gifts and no responses to anything. And he eyeballs the tea again. And on the TV, we see Keeley, right? As we saw at the last hotel they were in, at like the first season, right? Keeley doing one of those what the town has to offer videos, right? Except for it's dubbed in whatever the language is, right? You know, that promo video that's just on hotels about telling guests about the amenities of the hotel and the town around them. And then you cut back to the glass, which has mostly been drank. So Ted downed the majority, like 90% of what was in that glass, right? And you hear the sound of the door closing as Ted leaves, right? I'm like, yes! Yes, Ted's getting high, right? This is going to be great. Cut to back in Rebecca. She changed into like this sundress, right? Just a look we've never seen Rebecca. She's always got her hair pulled back. She's always wearing very conservative suits. You know, she's very put together. And this is like the first time. And it's kind of it's kind of strange in some ways seeing her in comfortable clothing. Like, she's got her hairs just down. She just seems natural, which it's amazing how different her energy is when she's more relaxed. And far more, like, I am far more attracted to women that are relaxed in that way. Not too overly concerned about perfect hair, tons of makeup put together like i like comfort i like lazy i like normal i like less is more for me right so it's it's a very interesting to see her uh in this way more of a natural look as it were and she finds out what happened with him and his ex that his ex cheated right and it hurt him and also almost led him to destroying his family uh but he realized that it didn't happen to him it happened for him, right? He changed his perspective on the whole thing, right? And they're, they're both drinking now, and she criticizes the artist who's singing on the radio uh, who did a cover, and he defends the artist. Like, this is, this is our guy. What are you talking about? And then he starts to sing along with the, the song that's on the radio, uh, and then she does as well. And of course, she's got a beautiful voice, right? Such a good singer. And it kind of shuts him up and kind of blows his minds. And then, you know, he joins in singing with her, right? And they're laughing, and it's adorable, right? They're kind of bonding over this thing. Cut to Jamie seemingly paying this homeless guy to uh, steal bikes for them, right? And Roy is protesting, and he's protesting because we find out that he's never learned how to ride a bike, right? And Jamie and the homeless guy share a look and a laugh at Roy's expense. Him, a grown man, not knowing how to ride a bike. Roy tells the story of his granddad offering to teach him uh, when he got home from a trip but ended up dying. So Roy never learned, right, because of this thing. Cut to Jamie, a hilarious montage, training montage of Jamie trying to teach Roy Kent how to ride a bike. Hilarious, right? Roy absolutely being just the most awkward man to sit on a bike. 
so funny. Jamie kind of pushing the bike like he's slowly progressing. And you have Jamie kind of like pushing his seat and letting go. But then Roy not pedaling. So eventually just kind of tipping over. A lot of falling down. But eventually he gets the hang of it. Right. And he's stoked. Right. He's stoked. Like, we're going to go see someone meals. Right. He's, Roy's super stoked that Jamie taught him how. Uh, and they're going to go off on this adventure to go see some real windmills. Cut to William and Higgins. William is sitting in this jazz club now, right, at a table. Higgins shows up. They got them some drinks and kind of criticizes uh, the table that, that he chose. It's kind of out in the open, right? He wanted something more tucked away. But Higgins thanks him for joining him on this trip to, you know, this jazz guy that inspired Higgins and now they're at a jazz club and like Higgins has, you know, he's kind of bonding with this kid cut to now Trent and Colin drinking beer, sitting on like the edge of the canal and Trent telling him about the second time that he came out to his ex. Right. And after that second time, she finally believed him. Right. And he has a daughter too, and she's never been happier. Right. And he asks how Colin is able to keep his secret. And Colin tells him that he basically lives two lives. Right. He has his work life and his dating life and nobody in the club knows. And he doesn't think that they would care. And then the people in his dating life, some guys think it's hot that it's a secret. That he keeps his secret and some say they don't care, but eventually they get tired and move on. So he mentions how Dr. Sharon, when she was there, helped him realize he was kind of, he hadn't like an ache to only have one life. Right. He just like this living two lives was too much for him. And she helped him realize that. But he doesn't want to be a spokesperson. Right. Or he doesn't want to get apologies. Right. He doesn't want that that focus to be on him for something that he is. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't want the attention that that will bring. Right. He just wishes after a game he could kiss his fella in the same way that the other guys kiss their gals. Right. He just wants to be able to be who he is at all times. And he asked Trent how he found out. And at first he said he's a master detective and his master detective abilities, but then confesses that he just saw him that one night outside of Sam's restaurant. Right. Saw him making out in the alleyway. Uh, cut to Ted walking around, people watching, kind of getting hypnotized by a billboard of a Van Gogh exhibit that's taking place at a gallery, right? Cut to him inside of that gallery looking at different Van Gogh painting, paintings, and you have this tour guide starts talking to Ted, right? Saying he had his demons, but that never stopped him from searching for beauty. When you find beauty, you find inspiration, if that is you stay as determined. If that is, then you stay as determined as Vincent. Never stop, no matter how many failures. And when you're no, when you know you're going, when you know you're doing what you're meant to do, you have to try. And Ted mentions that the state flower for his home state, Kansas, is the sunflower, and he's looking at Van Gogh's famous painting, Sunflowers. It's the title of this episode and the guide gives ted a van gogh book and tells him uh that they're about to close and he walks away right so this little interaction about inspiration about you know once you know what your purpose is you have to keep trying regardless of how many times you fail right if that's your purpose you have to just keep going so it's like this, it's the, it's the spark in Ted's mind. Then we cut back to the team, still in the lobby, by the way. Still haven't left. They're still arguing, still drinking. Danny recommends that since they are in Holland that they should at least eat Dutch food, right? They're still trying to decide on the food. And in a very loud, angry, like he's got a really loud, angry energy to it, which is funny. <laughs> it's just funny to see Danny uh, be show anger in any way. Uh, cut to the French player standing up and say he would rather die than eat Dutch food. Uh, then cut to Isaac. He's standing up on a table and yelling at all of them, right, for not coming together to decide. 
And then Sam, Sam writes something down on a napkin and then passes it around, right, till the note gets to Isaac where he reads it and he nods. Like Sam came up with the idea of how to fix it. We don't know what that is yet. Cut back to Roy and Jamie on their bike ride. Jamie apologizing for being a dick earlier uh, and then telling him about uh, he, that he's been to Amsterdam twice. The first time was when he was 14 and his dad was trying to get back with his mom again. Right. And he brought him out for some bonding. He brought Jamie out to Amsterdam for some bonding. Right. Took him to a football match. Then they took him to a red light district to lose his virginity. And Roy asks if it was traumatizing for him or if it was traumatizing. And Jamie's like, no, no, I think she loved it. Right. And he's like, oh, wait, you mean for me? And he's like, ah, no, it was, it was, it was OK. Right. It wasn't traumatizing for him. Uh, but then a couple years later, Jamie and his mom went back. She brought him back and they went on all the museum tours, took tours around everything. Right. It was an unforgettable time for Jamie. And Roy apologizes for being a dick as well and tells Jamie that he thinks Keely has a girlfriend. And Jamie suggests that they they find some windmills, right? They're like, let's not talk about this. Uh, let's go find some windmills. Let's take a quick break from this episode because I want to talk about, are you looking for the perfect gift for that art lover in your life? Look no further than InspireDisorder.com. Our gift cards can be used to purchase original artwork from the many faces, a collection of over 2,000 original abstract ink portraits. These one-of-a-kind pieces make for a truly unique and meaningful gift. But that's not all. Our gift cards can also be used to purchase high quality prints and t-shirts featuring these amazing paintings. Plus, if the recipient is a fan of the Ray Taylor show, they can use the gift card to purchase merchandise from the show as well. So why wait? Head on over to InspireDisorder.com and purchase a gift card today. Your loved one will be sure to appreciate the thought and creativity behind such a unique gift. Thank you for considering InspireDisorder.com for all of your gift needs and now back to the show uh cut back to now ted shows up at that american themed restaurant right the server they they all speak in like a, an american accent and the server is australian but definitely putting on like a southern accent uh and ted spots on his way in spots the dartboard right maybe he's gonna play some darts who knows cut back to rebecca and the dude uh, enjoying a story he asks if she would like some water after she finishes her last drink of alcohol right well you got to sober up might need to go um, and they have a, you know they have a moment when he tries to explain to her what uh, gazellig means because he's been saying it right and he describes it as being kind of a cozy peaceful kind of relaxing, comfortable kind of a state of being, right? There's no actual direct translation for what it means in English, but that's what the, the, the word means, right? Then the beep of the dryer, right? And they realize it's almost time. This is, this is, this is it. Her clothes are dry. It's time to say goodbye. And he checks on them and thinks they feel dry. She comes over and feels them and she throws the glass of water that he poured for her on them and then he does too right neither of them want this time to end so they go back and i know i predicted her and sam to get back together but i think now that this guy is like this is perfect right they're kind of the same age range she's a completely different person with him and i'm happy for her i want her to be happy this guy seems cool. They seem to get along. They seem to fit really well, right? So they go back, sit down at this tiny little table where they're eating food, and she she has them pour her another glass of wine. Cut to now Ted back at this restaurant, right? Decides to sit in the Chicago section of the restaurant, and on the TV he's watching some classic Chicago Bulls basketball game, right? When Michael Jordan was at his peak, when the, the Bulls was, were at their peak. And the waitress brings him this giant onion ring pyramid, right? And some freedom fries, which I think is like chili cheese fries, right? And he 
bets her at the end of the, he bets her the end of the game that's on the TV. He bets her what the score is going to be, and she's a little confused because she's like, "Well, I know this is like a rerun. It's not obviously he's joking, right?" And uh, he tells her he's just kidding. So then Ted mentions that he remembers watching that specific game with his dad and how much he used to love watching basketball with him. And now I'm thinking that Ted, when he leaves Richmond, which I think is going to happen, I think he's going to go back and coach basketball. Knowing that he had this bond with his dad over basketball and, you know, before Richmond he was coaching football, then he went to coach soccer, obviously, football in european football but it's clear that basketball was the sport than him and his dad and maybe he didn't get into coaching basketball because of the issues he has with his dad now that he's working through those issues with the help of uh dr sharon that maybe that is what his calling is going to be after this chapter in his life i would not be surprised at prediction and the way ted is acting I almost kind of think it's weed, right? Took a while to kick in. I don't know how long it takes for mushrooms to kick in. But as far as like the munchies kind of a thing, I don't know. I've never done mushrooms. I don't know if the munchie thing is it. But a tower of onion rings and a basket of chili cheese fries sounds amazing if I was high on weed. Right? And he hears the game announcers talk about the triangle offense, right? That was a major aspect of the Bulls' strategy with Phil Jackson, the big strategy of every team Phil Jackson coached, the triangle offense. And then Ted looks over at the pyramid of onions and kind of talking to himself, saying that a pyramid ain't nothing but three triangles all leaning on each other, right? And I'm thinking he's going to get inspired to use trying the triangles with his team, right? Then he looks over at one of the waiters who looks like Nate for a second, right? It says, howdy, Ted, right? So Ted's starting to see things. So now I'm kind of back to him on mushrooms because you don't really visualize. You don't have hallucinations on, on weed necessarily. Uh, then his waitress brings him a bottle of Arthur Bryant barbecue sauce, which I had to look this up, which this is a callback to the second episode of the entire series, I think. When Ted gets a care basket from home that includes this exact barbecue sauce. And he says that it's a taste that brings him back home, right? To memories with his dad. The specific barbecue sauce. And he also mentions the barbecue sauce when he's throwing darts against Rupert in a different episode. And before throwing the winning dart uh, against Rupert, he he, uh, mentions barbecue sauce before he throws it right so ted dips a fry in the barbecue sauce and as he bites he throws it into his mouth you hear the sound of the basketball net swish right as he throws the fry in his mouth and then he's kind of transported back just a dark space spotlight on him where he's talking to an announcer that is himself and the voice asks ted if he knows where the triangles come from, right? And Ted's like, oh, God dropped a square on the floor and it broke in half long ways. Obviously, classic Ted answer. Then the voice gives a rundown on Pythagoras, uh, definition of triangles of any shape with three corners. Uh, Then the voice goes into the many spiritual and religious uses of triangles, including the Native Americans who use the triangle as a symbol of home. Then the voice goes into the assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls named Tex Winter, who used it for his offense, right? This is where the triangle offense came into being, right? The inspiration for that, the inspiration that Ted is now getting. Ted ends up borrowing a pen from one of the waiters and starts jotting down ideas into that Van Gogh book that uh, the tour guide gave him. Cut back to William and Higgins at the jazz club. J- J- Higgins is like super into the music, kind of playing air bass with his eyes closed as the band goes. And Will keeps looking over at this couple that's making out the whole time, right? 
And I think William was kind of hoping on some level that he was actually going to go to the red light district for something other than jazz. The singer on stage notices Higgins and goes down and asks him if he plays. And Higgins is like kind of confused, right? He's just been, he's just been like in his own head playing air bass to the whole thing. He's like shaken out of this hypnosis and will answers for him telling her that, yeah, he plays the bass and it's because of Chet Baker. You know who Chet Baker is? That's what he's here for, right? Will is a little tipsy and like, being the wingman for for Higgins, right? Cut back to the team in some conference room, what it looks like a conference room or some event room, still at the hotel. Everybody's in like their athletic gear, like tank tops and stuff, holding pillows, and they're having a massive pillow fight, right? That is the idea that Sam had. We should just stay here and have a pillow fight. Abs- abs- absurd <laughs> that would be what he but i love it It still makes sense whatever cut back to higgins now he's on stage right got his bass and kicking off a song right starts playing a song with the people on in the band on stage um and as the music plays as higgins plays with this band we see slow-mo of the team having this pillow fight we see colin and trent back at the bar enjoying the party right there after their talk they went back to that gay bar and they're just dancing enjoying themselves at this at this party that's going on cut to rebecca and her new date dancing all the while you're hearing the jazz music that higgins is playing you cut to roy and jamie admiring an actual real windmill right then riding off back to the hotel then Rebecca and her dude smiling, happy, right? Cutting back to feathers flying out of the pillows in slow motion as the team is having a bunch of fun, right? You see the waitresses kind of enjoying watching them. They're holding drinks, watching this whole thing go on. Cut back to the gay bar with Colin being given the vanilla vodka from the, the bartender, right? And he shares it with Trent cut to Rebecca having this orgasmic foot massage that this mystery man is giving her then back to Ted where the wait staff at this restaurant is just amazed kind of watching him now he's got this table full of red and yellow condiment squeeze bottles he's clearly working out like these new strategies that he's like being flooded with inspiration right Cut back to Rebecca, passed out from the foot massage, and the dude just puts a blanket over her, and then he goes back to his bed, closes the curtain to his bedroom. Uh, Cut back to the pillow fight again, which now I'm thinking it's like the lobby of the bar where they're having it because you're seeing people coming down into that place and then like seeing the chaos that's going on, this pillow fight, and turning around and leaving. Then cut to Roy accidentally riding his bike off the path jamie not noticing uh and it finishes with higgins receiving a standing ovation at the end of the song right and i gotta say the whole montage just got me really choked up right seeing people happy seeing ted inspired really got to me cut back to the next morning rebecca is back uh to her pulled back hair her business attire while he's making breakfast and she asks if they did anything he says no he asks if she wants breakfast she says no and she thanks him but doesn't know his name and he says you're welcome and he doesn't know her name they both kind of like eh, right they don't know it's just like this magical night that they had together and she gives him a kiss and then he kisses her back right so it's this connection, this these mystery, this mystery connection, right? This romantic, I, romantic comedy kind of a thing, right? And she leaves and says she won't forget him, and he says that she might, you know, because people get Alzheimer's, right? Very funny joke, played it off well, right? She laughs and she walks out. Uh, cut to Will loading up the bus, the team bus, and he's on the phone with his mom telling all about his night out with his boss who played in this jazz band, right? And then you have this bu- this other van pull up that's like got painted on the side 
and out comes Beard, right? Of course, Coach Beard had a wild night, which we don't know, but we know what kind of wild nights he has. He's wearing this crazy jumpsuit. He's got a mullet wig on. He's got like this pig snout on. He's got these silver platform shoes, lightning bolt painted on his face. And I'm thinking, oh, this has got to be like David Bowie costume or something like that. I don't know what the, the snout is, but like, you got it. Who knows? Coach Beard just lives a wild life. And while back to Will going back to his call after he sees Coach Beard, Beard goes up on the, on the bus. Uh, and Will going back to his mom where he finishes this story that he's telling his mom about his night out that he ended up uh, hooking up with this couple and uh, they ended up having a uh, threesome, right? I, I, I don't know. People that have that kind of relationship with their parents is wild. Cut to Beard walking on the bus, walking to the back of the bus where he sees Ted. There's like this little conference type of area at the back of the bus where there's like a table and seats going all around it and and Ted's on that table, still jotting things down in this Van Gogh book. Um, and when Beard sits down, Ted guesses Piggy Stardust, which, of course, perfect. It was David Bowie, and the, the snout makes sense now, right? His costume is a pun. <laughs> and Ted apologizes for not joining Beard on his night out on tea. And Beard, Beard tells Ted that it was a dud batch. The beard didn't feel anything, called the bus driver to confirm it was a dud batch. They didn't feel anything, right? So Ted was inspired on his own. Ted had those hallucinations just psychosomatically, right? They were all in his head. Uh, and Ted shows Beard his uh, what he's been working on. And uh, Ted asks if Beard came up with this all on his own. And Ted's like, yeah, I did. I did. And Beard's, Beard says, you know, he should call it total football, which was invented in Holland where they are in the 70s and ted's like oh well should we at least try it out and beard is like yeah we should we should definitely try it out um because it makes sense obviously that's what is why it inspired ted just because he didn't invent something new doesn't mean it's not a worthwhile pursuit cut to rebecca joining them on the bus ted asking her about the uh unanswered texts Right. No, no. The unha gifts. And I appreciate that he pronounced gif properly. Anybody that says gif is just a troll. You know, it's, you don't call them Christmas gifts. You call them Christmas gifts. And a gift, an animated, a small animated thing that you send online is called a gif, not a gif. Get real people. And Ted asks if they're good. And she tells him she looks super comfortable, right? She tells him that her phone is at the bottom of a canal, right? She's super slack, relaxed. So is Coach Beard. Then you see Will coming on to get a head count, and he says that they're short two people. And just then you see Jamie riding up with Roy kind of hugging him from behind, sitting on the, the kind of book rack that's on the back of the bike. And Rebecca puts her feet up on the table. Ted asks if everything's okay. She's super relaxed, right? And Rebecca starts singing the Bob Marley song from the beginning of the episode, Three Little Birds. Don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be all right. Then Beard joins in. Then the rest of the bus joins in. And I fucking love this show. And as the credits are going, because I wanted to listen to this song, it's a great song. I noticed one of the credits, which I never look at the credits, especially for a TV show. And I see one of the credits is God, and it's played by As Herself, which I appreciate. That was funny. Uh, and I never watched the credits, and it's, it's great. I just wanted to hear that song, and I got a little, little extra uh, dose of, of funny. Uh, so... In this episode, that is the end of the episode. We see Ted's pep talk from last episode didn't really change anything, despite it being finally Ted showing he still got the fire, right? But the team was able to 
you know, at least enjoy their time in Amsterdam. Like they got kind of a reset. Roy and Jamie bonded some more. Uh, Colin got to open up to Trent and they got to bond. You have Higgins got to play jazz, whereas Hero once played. William got to have a threesome. Rebecca got to relax with some unnamed mystery man. Beard got to have one of Coach Beard's crazy adventures. Ted got to get inspired uh, and motivated despite not even having to get high. So he didn't even get high. Nobody got high in this episode. Nobody. Ridiculous. You got to see the team have a lot of fun together with their pillow fight. Right? It was kind of like a vacation, a reset for all of them. Right? This is the start. This is the change. This is the tipping point. From here on out, it's it's upward motion for for Richmond, I hope. And I think Ted's unoriginal idea, I think it's going to work. I think Rebecca might end up with that mystery man, possibly. Uh, and, you know, I think he's going to see who she is. Like, he's going to see a news article about her. He's going to find out who she is, and he's going to show up in a future episode, right? He's going to be able to track her down. Uh, I think Colin is going to come out to his team, right? Especially now that he has Trent support, you know, whether he decides to or not, I think he will feel more comfortable or something will come up that his team might suspect. Uh, I think Jamie is eventually going to come the te best player on the team. I think that's inevitable. I also think that Ted may decide to coach basketball at the end of the season after he finds out like you know after we f after i find out that he bonded with his dad over watching games as a kid right and maybe he even goes and coaches for the bulls i don't know how that would happen but you know he gets this crazy opportunity somehow right because of what he was able to do with richmond like some team in the in the nba brings him over i don't know all in all i thought it was a great episode truly got me choked up a lot and i'm excited to see where everything goes next uh which the next episode is season seven or season three episode seven boxes the greyhounds try a new strategy that has everyone thinking outside the box sam prepares to host a vip guest at ola's his restaurant so maybe we will see sam and rebecca maybe this vip guest will be some maybe this will be the guy maybe this guy is something important too and he's the vip guest who knows either way that is a wrap for another incredible episode of the ted lasso recap podcast y'all have been tuning in and i couldn't be more grateful if you're loving what i'm doing here please consider subscribing and leaving me a review i want to make sure i'm hitting the bullseye every time i step up to the mic now, I know you all have opinions, and I want to hear them. Reach out on social media at Ray Taylor Show on IG, TikTok, and Twitter, and let me know what you're thinking. I promise to read every message with the same enthusiasm as Ted coaching his team to victory. And finally, I can't wait to get back with you all next week for another deep dive into the world of Ted Lasso. So until then, stay curious, stay kind, and stay gold, folks. Don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. See, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Rise up this morning.
New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.